I've also been thinking a lot about gratitude, um, obviously, because of what's been going on um, in Israel at the moment, uh, what's been going on in parts of Palestine, because what's been going on in Gaza, and because of what's been going on with the Hamas attack and everything else has kind of transpired. I feel like for the most part, if you live in a place that isn't war-torn, it doesn't matter if it's in the Western world, whatever it may be, that you should definitely feel a sense of gratitude because I look at some of the stories coming out of that place and I think to myself, what would happen if the UK was embroiled in some kind of war and we as civilians, as citizens, had to bear arms? The UK government said, hey, everyone that's able, um, male or female or however you represent yourself, if you're at age between 18 and 55, bear arms, come and sign up. How long could we withstand the invasion or whatever it is i think we'd be done in probably a couple of weeks we'd be relying on our army we would be relying on our special forces like we don't have the resolution the fortitude the grit um the desire or whatever it may be to do any of that right this country is so split and broken um via political socio-economic lines racial lines religion lines and like, it's not going to happen i don't even think you could get the whites of this country to agree on certain things right across the country doesn't matter if in the south or in the north even the whites don't agree on certain things so you know god forbid trying to get all the flipping others um to try and agree on something especially to fight um underneath the flag of the united kingdom or great britain or whatever it just isn't going to happen so so I do have a lot of um, uh, I do have a lot of sort of appreciation and respect for people abroad who are doing that parts of Ukraine and obviously the people um, between um, Israel and Palestine. It's absolutely tragic. I really do call for peace and wish for peace on both sides for sure. Um, but at this point, probably too much blood has been spilt for peace to really come about. Um, you could be as optimistic as you want, uh, hope as you want, but the amount of people's lives that have been torn apart, lives that have been ended, um, the things that people have seen, I just don't think there is any sensible way that they could really come around to the table and have some sort of peaceful resolution unless um, international uh, bodies step in and kind of mediate between them. But I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. Um, that's a really tragic part about it because it's been going on for what 100 plus years um there's a lot of stuff going on there that's way outside of my intellectual level in terms of understanding but it's so deep rooted um so much time has passed so many tears so many blood's been spilled that i just don't see how they're going to be able to get around the table and it made me think in general that's probably one of the reasons why war in general is so fucking abhorrent because really and truly you have a real short window to rectify a solution a peaceful solution you have a very short window to rectify it because once it goes over a certain window and once certain things have happened and, and, and usually in war people take advantage of that right people make money in during war times uh it's, it's sometimes within people's best interest certain nations i won't name them if the wars do continue and shit so they don't have any incentive to really stop it so it's really between the two factions, the two countries, the two opposing groups to actually sort out the issues before things get crazy, before the others start to kind of, you know, create noise and distraction or whatever it may be and get to a point where you can't re have any resolution. That's how crazy war is. But one of the worst and most tragic scenes from this um, Israel-Palestine situation that's been going on has definitely been one I have had there on screen right now, courtesy of BBC. It says a headline. Like a horror movie, Israel music festival goers fled in hails of bullets. Can you imagine this? Like a fucking horror movie. This looks legitimately like one of the most scariest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Can you imagine being at a flipping festival, right? You know, pinging your head off, rolling, having a good time. Maybe got some drinks in you. Maybe just got the love of, you know, the love, the, the, the love of life in you right you're just feeling euphoric being surrounded by your friends doing the things that you actually enjoy and then suddenly you're in war mode you're having to be in survival mode running from a hail of bullets and to make it worse there's a scene that features like uh, allegedly like paragliders guys in like weird like parachute bun buggy things so it's basically they're flying they're jumping out of planes into this festival and they're and they've also strapped to these like buggy things that they can 
go and flipping drive to the flipping location of the festival and get people and you literally see people dancing and in the background you see parachutes landing behind them and they have no idea i remember that being one of the things um that i kind of kept in my mind when i was listening to one of these podcasts featuring one of these guys that goes up skys skyscrapers and does like backflips and hangs off of them he was basically saying oh it's a really amazing experience because you feel alone up there and no one's ever watching you because people rarely look up rarely if ever they're looking up so you can do all these crazy things above their heads they have no idea what's going on and how close you are to fucking falling it's fucking crazy but let's play the video itself this is coach of bbc it's a headline here i think it features some of the scenes that i was talking about previously <laughs> Jesus Christ. You hear the pa 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 and again, just imagine being in a festival like that. You're probably hearing a lot of noises. You're probably thinking there's crackers, there's poppers, whatever. It probably takes a long time to figure that stuff out, to process it in your brain. There's probably shock going on, like just so many emotions at the same time. But let me read the article. It says, For weeks, excited music lovers have looked forward to the Supernova Festival held in the desert of southern Israel to coincide with the Jewish festival of Sukkot. The time has come when the whole family is about to get together again, organizers wrote on social media before it began so this is a family festival not even like a festival for caners it's just like a generic so a general festival for all the family during a specific religious holiday yo um the time has come and what fun it is going to be just hours later their social media pages are flooded with desperate people trying to find loved ones and after palestinian militants stormed the festival and opened fire as part of a huge surprise attack so probably on that post under the comments there's people just trying to find all their family and friends on there one of 250 bodies more than 250 bodies have reportedly been recovered from the festival site according to rescue agency zaka one party goer called Ortel said the first sign that something was wrong was when the siren went off around dawn warning of rockets eyewitnesses said the rockets were quickly followed by gunshots they turned off the electricity and suddenly out of nowhere they militants come inside with gunfire opening fire in every direction 50 terrorists arrived in vans dressed in military uniforms 50 terrorists managed to kill 250 people of, of course they were unarmed maybe inebriated just you know just not prepared for any kind of violence at all so it just shows how quickly the numbers can just rack up in it um people tried to flee the site she said running across the sand and getting into cars to drive away but pygo has said that their jeeps were full of gunmen were full of gunmen shooting at their cars yeah, I saw a few of those videos as well. Like cars have been riddled with bullets and then coming to a screeching halt. Like super sad, man. Like you see it driving off like someone actually behind the wheel. Then a few gunshots later, you see it kind of just like cruel to a stop. Like <sighs> they fired burst and we reached a point where everybody stopped their vehicles and started running. I went into a tree in a bush like this and they just started spraying people. I saw masses of wounded people thrown around and I'm in the tree and trying to understand what's going on. <sighs> I don't even know what the best thing to do. If that's something, if something that's happening to you, is the best thing to stay in a car and just keep driving as fast as you can? Or would it be to get on foot and try and do zigzags and whatnot? I don't know. I think probably getting into a car might be the best thing. Getting into a car and just kind of, I guess the only thing that would be bad is that if you get in the car and you duck down and just press your foot on the accelerator, you might run into somebody. You have no idea who's in front of you. But that might be best way to do it. Just duck down, have your hand in the steering wheel. This feels like a movie. And just keep beeping your fucking horn and just drive as straight as you can and hope you get away. Because I think on foot, you have no chance really, in it. But again, I'm thinking about this all kind of armchair quarterback in it. I'm sure it's different when you're in the flipping situation. The festival site with three stages, camping area and a bar and a food area was in the Negev Desert near Kibbutz in Rim. It's not far from the Gaza Strip where... Um, Hamas fighters crossed over at dawn to launch their attack. They infiltrate towns and villages and taken tons of people hostage. That's the thing that I've only just realized recently, by the way, um, of recent years, I think because of Roy Perez, because of Yonti and a few other people. I didn't know that there's such a big scene of electronic music fans in Israel, in Palestine, in that part of the Middle East in general. I didn't know that was a thing. I really didn't until I kind of did a bit more research and find there was many clubs, especially even gay clubs out there that held a crazy parties, great little festivals and stuff, and a really thriving little scene, which makes sense though, isn't it? They always say in the places where there's a lot of conflicts and stuff, there's usually a pretty decent creative scene bubbling in there because it's the only outlet people have to kind of distract them from the horrors of their everyday life. But can you just imagine you're at a festival and this just happens out of the blue? mid-festival too 
Jesus. Festival goer Adam Burrell told Havert, told Haretz that everyone at the rave had been aware that a chance of rocket fire in the area, but the gunfire was a shock. Like many others, he tried to escape in car, but the gunmen were firing at them, so they got out and ran. People were hit, we hid, everyone ran somewhere else. Wow, I don't know what even they where are you hiding then? If you've got people are shooting at cars. There's a video here with the cars all on fire. Let's watch this quickly. Jesus Christ. Wow, there's a car just going through the camera in front of the car. And left and right, you just see cars flipped over, burned, abandoned, just everywhere. God almighty, bro. Every car just paints a story of a person, isn't it? It kind of reminds me of those chilling images of people from Auschwitz and stuff and all the shoes left behind. And basically every shoe that was um, taken off of people before they went to the concentration camps was just basically a person that passed away. This is how tragic this car looks or the cars look. It's the same sort of thing. Wow, man. So crazy. Um, Esther Borochov told Reuters that she was driving away when her vehicle was rammed into. She saw a young man driving another car who told her to get in. She did, but the man was then shot at point blank. Esther said she played it until she was finally rescued by Israeli military. The guy that got told to get into a car was shot. This is like a movie. Oh my God. Let's watch this person speak about this issue. Flipping hell. I was the first one to go out of the field. Still, people took them like two, three hours to go out. And all the way people were dying, all the way on the road. Young people. It's a festival for young people. Many, many people were dying in the road. Whoever tried to run away, they were shooting him from both sides. So best were to hide. A lot of people dead next to her. I was, it was unbelievable that she was able to escape because next, right and left from where the car was there, there were bodies next, right and left. You can really see that the terrorists take, took out people from the car and just gunned them down. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ, bro. Let's read the article. articles. Um, I couldn't move my legs, she told Reuters from the hospital. Soldiers came and took us away to, to the bushes. Many festival goers like Ortel hid in the nearby bushes and fruit orchids for hours, hoping the military to arrive and rescue them. I put the phone on mute and then I started crawling through an orange grove, she said. Live fire was whistling above me. They were going tree by tree and shooting. I saw people all dying all over. I was very quiet. I didn't cry. I didn't do anything. Eventually, after three hours, she heard some voice of Israeli soldiers and decided to make a run for safety. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having to play dead in such a scenario, knowing that they're going from p pillar to post, making sure everybody that they're shooting is actually dead, double checking, shooting again, and you having to play dead? Oh, and obviously, thank God she has the foresight to put her phone on silent. Imagine you do all that and then your phone goes off because your mom's calling you. <sighs> Eventually, after three hours, she heard some voices of Israeli soldiers inside to run. Um, another witness told Channel 12 it was four or five hours of a horror movie. We ran like crazy. It was just crazy. It was a massacre, said Yaniv, an emergency medic who was called out to the party. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It was a planned ambush as people came out of the emergency exit squads of terrorists were waiting for them and they started picking them off. That's just really, really, really tragic, isn't it? To go after civilians like that is just abhorrent, really, to be fair, isn't it? But then I guess it's abhorrent on their side too because they've been, you know, what they would describe as being occupied for many, 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 many years. Um, you know, there's been a lot of um, what people would deem to be racial cleansing going on over there. Um, literally you see videos of people literally being pushed off of their land you know what i mean dragged out of their homes kicking and screaming and shit it's just one of those things it's just human nature and you can't oppress people forever and think there's not going to be a reaction there's always going to be one reaction and i guess there are some people out there that are saying oh israel wanted this to happen because um you know the hamas went through the gates and the guards and the barriers and the checkpoints and all of these things and the borders way too easily and some people are saying that they may be purposely left those places unmanned um so that they could go through them easily and then obviously that could then spark um the war and then allow them to declare um you know basically um the full-blown war and kind of get away with doing what they wanted to get away with from the very beginning i don't really know but i've just i just really really am hoping for peace on both sides but i also am not naive and i know that too much blood has been spilled and most likely this will never end until they probably both obliterate each other that's the unfortunate part and the only people that i really kind of cry for are the innocent civilians just trying to live their everyday life do you know what i mean their ones are going to be caught in the crossfire of all of this
Um, there are loads of foreign interests involved who are profiting from this also. And um, yeah, man, it's always the regular civilians that suffer the most, always. Um, it says here there were 3,000 people at the event. They were probably, so they probably knew it. They had intelligence information. Friends and family members of the missing loved ones are now desperately hoping to find, um, to find them. And of course, that's the site of the festival. <sighs> Looks like a good festival to me, right? You've got the main entrance, camping areas. Imagine you were in the camping area, just tripping off mushrooms and shit. <sighs> I can't imagine. I just can't imagine how your brain would process all that shit. Among the missing is British man, Jake Marlowe. He was working security guard. I think that's the guy that passed away. No, is this the same dude that passed away in this other article that I got? No, this is somebody else. Nathan, Nathaniel Young, a British man serving Israeli military killed in her mass attack. I'm RIP, man, Nathaniel. Jesus, Chris. Um, another woman, 25-year-old Noah Aragamani, is believed to have been taken hostage. Noah's friend, Amit Parpara, pa, pa, told BBC that she was messaging her as she hid. Around 8.30 was the last message I got from her. Um, Amit saw a video call for social media appearing to show her being taken captive. It shows her on a motorcycle being, oh, that's her friend, being taken away with her boyfriend. You can see clearly her tarot going um, to Gaza Strip. That's the other tactic that I've only seen during the Ukraine war recently of people not only going to kill, but also going to get people as hostage. But usually the ones that I've seen from Ukraine, it's mostly soldiers. It's not innocent civilians. I've not seen this tactic. That's a crazy tactic. But I guess if you want to, um, if you want certain, you know, if you want your terms to be met, maybe the best way to do it is to grab innocent civilians because you know you basically put your um, the person you're opposing in in the, back them in a, into a corner. You put a lot of pressure on them to basically agree to your demands. It's a very sadistic, very cruel. But I guess in this game, you know, all better off. Um, the parents of 23-year-old American Israeli Hirsch Goldberg Pulin are also looking for their son who was there celebrating his birthday. They told the Jerusalem Post that they received two short messages from him. Says, I love you and I'm sorry. Fucking hell. At least 600 Israelis have been killed since the attack. 600. And whatever more Palestinians also from before and probably going forward. According to the latest figures of local media, fighting between Israeli military and Palestine military is continuing and Israel has launched a wave of attacks on Gaza. The strikes have killed at least 413 people. Jesus Christos, bro again i pray for peace on both sides absolutely tragic um yeah i just it's just the civilians that i just care about the most to be fair really really is tragic to say the least absolutely